What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about butter versus seed oils. Which is better for mortality, cardiovascular disease, and cancer? But first, you know the drill. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. Okay, so as you guys know, I've done several videos on seed oils now, and usually they get the same vitriolic response, which is the funding source, or seed oils are made like motor oil, or they have chemical solvents in them. They oxidize, they inflame. Okay, when it comes to this stuff, it is always easy to find mechanistic data to support whatever it is you want to prove. And in the case of seed oils, you can find animal studies at high doses where they show omega-6 derived fatty acids like linoleic acid from seed oils increase inflammation, oxidative stress, and possibly have some deleterious health effects in high doses in rats and mice. But do we care about the effects of ultra high doses in rats and mice, or do we care about what happens in, I don't know, human freaking beings? As I've already covered before, the studies in humans looking at omega-6 derived fatty acids from seed oils show either neutral or positive effects when replacing saturated fat in a one-to-one -one ratio on metabolic health, insulin sensitivity, liver fat, cardiovascular disease, cancer possibly, and again, not all studies show benefits to those compounds, but they're at least neutral. There are no studies that I'm aware of looking at actual hard outcome data demonstrating that in one-to-one -one ratios that saturated fat is healthier for things like insulin sensitivity, metabolic health, liver fat, cardiovascular disease, cancer, compared to polyunsaturated fats from seed oils. Okay, now that we've set the stage, one of the criticisms from people who like to say that seed oils are the root of all these problems is that, well, you know, you can't really compare polyunsaturated fats to saturated fat because, you know, humans eat, eat, eat foods, they eat foods. And, and what they're actually doing is they're just trying to move the goalpost so that there's not any studies looking at directly what they want to account for. Until now, this study was looking at butter intake versus plant oil intake and the effects on mortality from all causes, cardiovascular disease mortality, and cancer mortality. It was a study of over 200,000 people, men and women, that had over 33 years of follow-up. And we'll cut to the take-homes first. Butter increased the risk of mortality from the lowest intake to the highest intake by anywhere from 15 to 40%. Now, this was depending on the statistical models they used. In the end, they concluded with the model that butter raised the risk of mortality by 15%. Not only was butter intake associated with a greater risk of mortality from all causes, it was also associated with a greater risk of cancer mortality. It was associated with a greater risk of cardiovascular disease mortality, but that did not reach statistical significance. Now, what about plant oils? Well, plant oils were associated with about a 16% decreased risk of total mortality. They're also associated with a decreased risk of cancer mortality by about 12% and a decreased risk of cardiovascular disease mortality. And they also did a substitution analysis where they looked at substituting 10 gram increments of butter intake with plant oil, and they found a 17% decreased risk of total mortality, 17% decreased risk of cancer mortality, and about a 6% decrease in cardiovascular disease mortality, but that did not reach statistical significance. They did a very thorough analysis of this. Not only did they look at total plant intake, but they looked at subcategories of different types of plant oils. And one of the things they did was look at this analysis and see if they pulled out olive oil, did they still see similar results? Now, olive oil is important because even the seed oil haters will acknowledge typically that olive oil is overall neutral or good for you. So they pulled out olive oil in this analysis and they still found the results, although a little bit smaller effect were generally similar. So removing olive oil still showed that the other plant oils had a protective effect on mortality, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. They further broke it down into 
like butter from frying or just added to food, they generally saw similar results. They broke it down into different types of oil, corn oil, safflower oil, canola oil, soybean oil, and olive oil. And pretty much across the board, all the plant oils had protective effects on cardiovascular disease, cancer, and overall mortality. Now, the one exception to this was corn oil. Corn oil was associated with a small increased risk of total mortality. Now, that was about 9% and it did not reach statistical significance. That was using the model comparatively that was used for butter and that they ended up using in the final analysis. This is important to point out because in the first model, corn oil did have a significant association with mortality by an increased risk of 15%. But if we're gonna use the first model, then that means butter had an increased risk of mortality by 40%. So again, still comparing straight up on a gram per gram basis, corn oil, while it elevated the risk of mortality, was not nearly as bad as butter. And then if we use model two, which is actually the model that shows less risk from butter, we see that corn oil does not have a statistically significant association with mortality. But across all the other oils, like safflower oil, we see a non-significant decrease in the risk of mortality. With canola oil, we see a significant decrease in mortality of anywhere from 10 to 15%. With soybean oil, we see a significantly decreased risk of mortality by anywhere from six to nine percent. If we look at olive oil, we do see a little bit more robust effect of about 18 percent to 27 percent decreased risk of mortality. And again, those ranges are due to the two different statistical models they used. But again, consistently across all plant oils had a lower risk of mortality when compared with butter. And when it came to canola oil, soybean oil, and olive oil, those plant oils had a statistically significant effect on decreasing the risk of mortality. Now, what's also cool about this is they looked at various confounding variables as moderators. So they looked at physical activity, age, uh, healthy eating index, alcohol intake, BMI, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, smoking, sex, like male or female, and with small exceptions, they saw across the board pretty similar effects, regardless of subcategory. They even did things like include BMI as a covariate and then remove it, and include healthy eating index as a covariate and then remove it to see if it affected the results. And again, the absolute numbers changed a little bit, but the overall trend and effects were the same, which was butter increased the risk of mortality whereas plant oils decrease the risk of mortality. Am I saying that you can never eat butter and you should only eat seed oils? It's not what I'm saying. The increased risk of 15%, again, is a relative risk, meaning if the absolute risk of mortality across, say, a 30-year period is 30%, a 15% increase in that risk does not make it 45%, it makes it 34.5%. And I'm, I'm just using an arbitrary number here. It's not as scary as it sounds. But again, this video is more for people who claim, don't eat seed oils. They're bad for you. Instead, you should use butter because it's not going to be oxidized as easily and all this other stuff. And then they, they cite all this animal research showing that, you know, high doses can increase inflammation and they scare you with how it's made and all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, the human outcome data does not support the idea that seed oils are uniquely deleterious for health. Because if they were, at minimum, what we'd expect to see is like no difference between butter and seed oils. And you could kind of say, well, you know, these long-term cohort studies, it's tough to pick out differences because of all the confounding variables, even though they controlled for a lot of those. But the reality is the data very consistently goes in the opposite direction of what these people are claiming. So where are all these studies of human outcome data demonstrating that seed oils are gonna increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, mortality, these hard human outcomes? They just don't exist. And again, even when you go across all the subgroups, the trend is still pretty darn consistent. Even when you remove and add in confounders to the statistical analysis, the trend is pretty darn consistent. 
And even when you use different statistical models, regardless of the model, the absolute numbers change, but the directionality is still the same. And it's important that they looked at this in a substitution analysis because seed oils, added oils, are one of the biggest sources of calories in the American diet in the last 50 years. So if you're just dumping oil on top of stuff and it's causing you to increase your calories a lot and you're eating a lot of foods that are fried in oil, you're consuming a lot more calories overall, yeah, that's probably not good for you. But again, we have to compare apples to apples. And so we have to compare it of somebody consuming that versus something else, in this case, a source of saturated fat like butter. I have to disclose the funding source. So most of the study was funded by the National Institute of Health, the NIH, which is a government funded grant. They had no involvement in planning or execution of the study. And one of the authors, I believe, received funding from the Dried Nut and Fruit Council. That's right, you heard it first. Big Nut is trying to poison you with seed oils. Uh, I've never heard of the nut, the Dried Nut and Fruit Council. My guess is they don't really have a very large endowment. And again, they were not involved in the design and execution of this study. If you wanna say they're what caused them to find these results, then I just, you're so dense, I don't, I don't know what to do. But at the end of the day, this is not a study in isolation. The studies very consistently, again, show that when you replace saturated fat with sources of polyunsaturated fats from seed oils, you either have neutral or positive effects on insulin sensitivity, liver fat, metabolic health, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and mortality. So again, I implore the anti-seed oil people, if these are really so horrible for you, where is the data? Where is the hard human outcome data? It simply doesn't exist. They will try to scare you with how they're manufactured. They're heated at high temperatures and they oxidize. I've looked into the processing of these oils. Most of the processing of these oils is done to remove impurities, to remove free fatty acids, to remove oxidized fatty acids. Yes, the heating process can increase oxidation, but the way that these are currently processed, it is less than a 1% change in the oxidative status. And the overall net effect of the processing of these plant oils by removing impurities and in removing oxidized free fatty acids, the overall effect is probably that they have less oxidation, not more. And even if it was the case that it increased oxidation of these oils, if that was so horrible for you, we should see it in the data. We should see it in human outcome data. Even if it was this ridiculous number of increased oxidation, that is not a hard endpoint. And if they were bad for you based on this, which again, they're not, but let's say they were, then butter is way freaking worse. What are you going to eat instead? Again, the people who try to scare you about seed oils, their arguments are extremely flimsy. They're all based on limited unphysiological animal research, and they just kind of la 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 when it comes to hard human outcome data. If you guys like these research breakdowns, make sure you subscribe to my research review reps. Link is in the description, and I will catch you next week.